Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode on The Financial Madness. My name is Kozan and I'm here to help you be better with your money. So in this episode, we're gonna be talking about another scheme that allows first time buyers onto the property market. Now this is a scheme that was introduced by the government way back in 2013, and it's called the Help to Buy Equity Loan. As of March 2020, the equity loan has been used to help individuals purchase just over 270,000 properties here in the UK. And it's even growing in popularity in the most recent of times. So without further ado, let's break down the help to buy equity loan and figure out whether or not this is the correct scheme for you. As with any scheme, there are a lot of rules to go through. So first off, we're gonna break down what those rules are, and then towards the end, we're gonna be looking at some of the pointers to figure out whether or not this is the correct scheme for you. Cool, so rule number one is that currently, you need to either be a first time buyer, so that means you don't own a property anywhere else in the world, or you can be an owner, but you're looking to change your primary residence. Now I should stress that this rule is actually only applicable until April 2021. Post April 2021, the rules are changing slightly and help to buy equity loans will only be eligible for first time buyers only. So rule number two is that you can use the property for the following criteria. A, the property has to be within the UK. There are separate rules for Wales and Scotland, which I will touch upon later. B, the value of the house is 600K or less. And and C, the property has to be a new build, which means that it can't have had any previous homeowners. Rule number three is that at absolute minimum, you need to have at least 5% as a deposit to be eligible for the equity loan. Rule number four is that we need to understand how the equity loan works. So once you have at least 5% as a deposit, you can ask the government to purchase a proportion of your property, and that proportion is either up to 20% if you're living outside of London, Within London, it's slightly higher. They can buy up to 40% of the property. So how does this work? Let's use an example to make this a bit more clearer. Say I want to purchase a 400,000 pound house. So I'm gonna be pretending that I'm living outside of London. So I'm only eligible for up to 20% of the equity loan, but I will be putting the maths for both the 20% and 40% just so you can have that as a comparison. So as I said, I'm looking to buy a 400K house. I have my 5% deposit, which works out to be 200. £20,000, so I have that in my bank account. I then apply for the equity loan and the government have agreed to purchase 20% of my property, which works out to be £80,000. So that means now, towards my property, I now have £100,000 covered or 25%. Now for the remaining £300,000 or 75%, I need to get a mortgage to cover this. Now this can be quite beneficial for you as a home buyer because even though despite that you have a very small deposit, 5%, you only need to get a mortgage to cover the remaining 75% because the government have already purchased 20% of the property. This means the fact that you're asking the bank for less money means that you'll be open to more mortgage products and they are likely to be at very competitive interest rates. Remember, however, that the equity loan is separate from your mortgage. So you're essentially taking out two different agreements to go through with this scheme. Rule number five is to understand how we pay back the equity loan. With the first five years of the equity loan, you do not have to pay the government any money back nor are you charged any interest rate on that loan as well. Now this is another good plus with the equity loan because unlike any other form of borrowing, you do not pay any interest for the first five years. So this means if you are able to pay back the government within those five years, it's essentially free borrowing as you're just paying the loan off and none of the interest that you would have accrued if you took out some other form of loan. However, if you are unable to pay the loan back within those five years, you will then begin to be charged interest and it's calculated in a very specific way. In year one, you'll be charged a flat rate fee of 1.75% interest, and every year after year one, your interest will increase by the rate of inflation, which will be measured by something called the Retail Price Index, or the RPI, plus 1%. Now, this is just a percentage chain. I'm not simply saying 1.75 plus 1% plus whatever the percentage the RPI is. This is a percentage change. I'll do some quick maths just so you understand. So let's say I've already done my year one, I'm paying 1.75% interest. Year two comes along and the RPI is at 4%. 
Adding on the 1%, that means my 1.75% interest will increase by 5%. Now this is 5% of 1.75, which roughly equals 0.08%. So that means in year two, my new rate will have increased from 1.75 to 1.84. So this increase will happen for every year that you have the equity loan. So in year three, that 5% increase would happen on 1.84, not 1.75. And finally, rule number six, I mentioned earlier that there are slightly different rules for Wales and Scotland. For Wales, you can only use the help to buy equity loan for properties that are 300K or less. And in Scotland, it's only for 200K or less. And the Scottish government will only give you up to 15% as an equity loan. However, in Scotland, there is another additional benefit. And that is that the equity loan is interest free for the entirety of its lifetime. You don't have that five year rule that I mentioned earlier. So Scotland, you're bloody lucky. Unfortunately, in Northern Ireland, there are no help to buy schemes at this present time. So those are the main critical rules that we need to understand. Now let's go over to some pointers to decide whether or not it's worth getting an equity loan. So point number one is that obviously the main strength of the equity loan is that it helps individuals that are struggling to put together a large deposit because usually banks will require at least 10 to 15 percent to secure a mortgage. Five percent mortgages do exist with banks however they are rare and they usually are at a very unfavorable interest rate. And just to add on to that, not only is your deposit smaller, you are likely to have access to better mortgage products because you only have to purchase the remaining share after the government have chipped in their 20% or 40% um, of equity. Now it's really important to note that we understand the term equity loan. This means that the government will own a share or a proportion of your property. This is not a money loan. So this means that the government can own up to 20% if you're living outside of London and up to 40% of your property. So this point has some major implications when it comes to paying back the equity loan to the government. This means that the amount you pay back is dependent on the future value of your house. Now let's go back to our previous example to better explain this. I purchased a 400k house using the 20% equity loan. Remember I put in 5% and the government put in 20%. So let's say in 10 years time I pay back the government the entire equity loan. However the value of my house now has increased from 400,000 to 450,000 pounds. Now remember, the government owned 20% of my property. So this means 20% of 450,000 pounds is 90,000 pounds. And this is how much I have to pay back the government. So this means over the course of 10 years, the government have put in 80,000 pounds to purchase my property. But now I have to pay an additional 10,000 pounds because the value of my property has increased. So in summary, if the value of your property goes up, you'll also have to pay back more money to the government. Now, I know this sounds really unfair. However, remember, you are also experiencing the benefits of having the property value increase too. So the same is true if we did the opposite. So if the value of your property depreciated or went down in value, you pay less money back to the government. However, in this scenario, we'll be in a situation where we're in negative equity, and that's not really a pleasant spot to be in either. The next thing we should consider is comparing the interest rate repayments between whether we decided to go with the equity loan route or if we decided to go through a normal mortgage route. So there's a really good table on Money Saving Expert. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to look at it a bit more detail. But they do a really good comparison between the interest rate repayments on mortgages versus an equity loan and a mortgage. So as you can see, with a 200K property, they've done a 5% and 10% deposit uh, comparison. So in this table, it's two scenarios, both of which are 200K properties, one with a 5% deposit and one with a 10% deposit. So sticking with the 5% deposit row, after five years or with a normal 95% mortgage, we would have paid just under 10,000 pounds in interest rate payments. Comparing that to a 75% mortgage and a 20% equity loan, we would have paid back 4,564 pounds in interest. So considerably less. So this is a win for the equity loan. Now after 10 years, we pay back just over 15,000 pounds in interest with the normal 95% mortgage. And with the 75% mortgage plus the 20% equity loan, we pay just under 12,000 pounds. So the margin between the two are getting smaller. 
Now, in 15 years, there's a turn of events. With a 95% mortgage, we would have paid just over £18,000 in interest. But however, with the equity loan option, we would have paid almost £9,500 in interest. Because remember, after year six, the rate of interest increases on our equity loan by the rate of inflation plus 1%. And as you can see, if we look at the interest after 25 years, there's a considerable difference. With the 95% mortgage route, we would have paid just over £20,000 in interest. But with the equity loan route, we would have paid just over £38,000. That's almost double the 95% mortgage. So there's a clear message here. The longer you hold the equity loan, the more expensive it's going to cost you. So that moves on to the next and final point. How on earth do we pay back the equity loan? So we have a few options available. It's important to note that the loan doesn't actually have to be repaid back in full unless you A, sell your property, or B, you finish repaying your mortgage. Typically, mortgage terms range from 25 to 40 years, but this can obviously be a lot less or a lot more depending on the deal that you take out. So after those five years, one of the options that we can take is that we just simply sell the property and move it elsewhere. So once you sell your property, the proceeds from that sale can be used to pay off the government loan. The next option that we have available is that you simply pay off the government loan and stay put. As discussed in our previous options, you can either pay back the loan in full within those five years and pay no interest on it whatsoever, or you try your best to pay off that government loan as soon as possible, because we've shown that the longer that you hold the equity loan, the more expensive it will be for you in the future. And then the third and final option is that you can remortgage your property. And with the proceeds from that remortgage, you can then pay off the government loan in full or partially. So I'm just gonna to touch upon what remortgaging actually is. It essentially is when you replace your current mortgage deal in favor of another mortgage agreement. As always, I like to explain with examples because I think that's how we best learn. So let's go back to our earlier example where, again, remember, I just purchased a 400K property with a 5K deposit and the government chipped in 20%. Now, after five years of paying my mortgage, because remember, within those five years, I'm only paying my mortgage provider. I'm not paying any money to the government because for five years, I don't have to. Now, after five years of repaying the mortgage, I now own a high percentage of the house. I now own 10%. So now I own 10%, the government still own 20%, but the bank, instead of 75%, only own 70%. The reason why I'm using the 10% as an example in this case is because that's what you really should be aiming for. Because as I mentioned earlier in my video, 10 to 15% mortgages are typically what banks look for when giving you sort of the good mortgage products. So now that I'm in this position, I can discuss with my bank about remortgaging. But now I want to take out a bigger loan. This time I'm going to ask to loan me the equivalent of 90% of the value of the house. Now with this loan, I can now pay off the government's 20% share of equity. So then I'll be left with a breakdown that looks like 10% of the property owning to myself and then 90% of the property is now owned by the bank. So obviously I've just touched upon what remortgaging looks like, but obviously this does need further consideration. If you're taking out a larger loan with the bank, this means that your repayments to that mortgage are likely to be higher. So you do need to spend some time carefully understanding whether this is an affordable way for you to do that. So those are the three options that you can do when paying back the equity loan. You can either sell up and move property, you can simply pay back the government loan, or you can remortgage the property and pay off the government that way. So that is Help to Buy Equity Loans Explained. So now that I'm hoping that you have all the information that you need to decide whether or not the equity loan is the correct option for you. Because there is no right or wrong answer here. Every person's situation is different. And I'm really hoping that this video gave you a clear understanding of what the Help to Buy Equity Loan is. And from there, you can decide on whether it's the correct option for you. Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. If you've got any questions or if I've missed anything, please let me know in the comments section down below. I love engaging with you guys. And yeah, and if you found the video really useful, please give this a thumbs up. That does wonders for the growth of my channel. I release a video every single Monday. So if you want to keep up to date, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later.